This is a golden era to live as an African, trust me. We weren't alive to see the revolution of Africa's independence in the late 50s to the early 60s. And many of us were still not around to see what it meant to hear of all these coups and civil wars in Africa in the 70s. But ladies and gentlemen, we are here today in 2025 to witness firsthand what bravery can lead to when an African leader steps to the front to take on leadership role that is devoid of fear for detractors and oppressors. That benefits the people. This is happening in real time, ladies and gentlemen. This generation is going to be the generation to experience the total liberation of Africa from both domestic and international fronts. And Captain Ibrahim Traore of Burkina Faso will be in the center of it all when history is written. His bravery is contagious and transformative. And ladies and gentlemen, he is at it again. He has set off on another mission to commercially irrigate farms in his country and to grow crops all year round for the local Burkina Bay market and the rest of West Africa. It baffles me on every direction, I think, ladies and gentlemen. It makes me wonder what Ghana's successive presidents have been doing all this while. Same question goes to the successive presidents of Uganda and Tanzania and Kenya, South Sudan, Sudan, Ethiopia, and the DRC. And I'll tell you why in a minute. This episode is about Traore's push for sustainable agriculture in Burkina Faso and how he intends to achieve this. But before we get into it, ladies and gentlemen, be kind to subscribe and click on the bell to watch all of my videos. Let's do this. Burkina Faso, under the leadership of the captain, has been actively constructing and rehabilitating dams on rivers for a few months now. The interesting thing is, there is one major river body in Burkina Faso which literally supplies water to the streams in the country. It is this same river that flows from their country to my own country in Ghana. It is called Mohon River, which is also known as the Black Volta in Ghana. That is the largest river in Burkina Faso and the captain has decided to dam it at several levels for irrigation purposes. The captain has embarked on a major nationwide water management and irrigation initiative. His plan is to rehabilitate 38 dams and construct two new dams for the purpose of irrigating 3,073 hectares of farmlands. So from April of 2025, work began on the Diaradogu Dam. This dam has a water holding capacity of 10 million cubic, which is about 106 million cubic feet. And guess where the funding for the project came from, ladies and gentlemen? From the local government. So the state is funding the entirety of the project and also create a 1 million embankment for the water body to prevent spillovers and create an irrigation canal to farmlands. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first dam they started in April of this year. Then he started construction works on the second dam in June of this same year. It's called the Sangin Dam, which is currently 61% complete. This dam will hold 123 cubic of water, irrigating about 400 hectares of farmland, plus providing drinking water to the nearby communities. Ladies and gentlemen, these two dams are fully Burkina Bay funded. Totally Burkina Bay funded. Remember, the man imported several hundreds of excavators some six months ago. This is what those machines are being used for in this country. And the tractors are being used on the farm. The man wants to develop the crop and the fish production capacity of his country to the level where they can conveniently be self-reliant. And that makes me curious to want to ask you this question, ladies and gentlemen. What has the government in your country been doing in the last one year? Are they doing something similar, ladies and gentlemen? Or is it still the excuses? What are they saying now? Did they say there is a war and prices are rising and America has withdrawn their aids and increased tariffs? And for that reason, they can't do much? But that's the same thing happening to Burkina Faso, ladies and gentlemen. Yet development is happening. Don't you rather think that politicians in your country are clueless about solutions? 
Can you now see how nonchalant they are about people's problems? Listen, there is no problem peculiar to your country. Whatever your country is going through is the same thing happening everywhere. Therefore, if your country is not moving forward, it's not because they are overburdened with certain problems which other countries don't have, but because those in charge are empty in your country. I'm telling you, they are empty-minded people. Let me give you this classical example in my own country. This is the same river that is dammed heavily in Ghana, coming from Burkina Faso. It is one of the world's largest man-made dams that was constructed between 1961 to 1965 by our very first president, Osajifu Kwame Nkrumah. Since the time it was constructed to now, no government ever thought of establishing farms that would supply the entire country with crop produce and fish from that dam. It flows from the north, turn our turbines for hydroelectric power, provide us with drinking water, and goes freely into the sea. It sometimes breaks its boundaries and floods into people's homes. We go back to provide some mattresses and sympathy and some money to the affected people and move on. This has been the story in the last 68 years in Ghana, ladies and gentlemen. Meanwhile, a young soldier walks in and starts putting the water to its maximum use. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see how dumb people can be for so long in Africa? One man is turning the same water body into a massive resource for economic development, whereas the other ones, the other men, praise that the water continues to flow so that we may not sleep in darkness. This is the difference between leadership and rulership. This is the same thing happening in the countries I mentioned earlier. In Uganda, Tanzania, DRC, and Co. There are 11 of them. 11 African countries all have the Nile River flowing through their land. They have arguably the longest river in the world flowing through their country. And yet, they wait for grains from overseas. All those 11 countries wait for rice from Asia. This is what we black Africans have done to ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. We have put clueless leaders in charge of our resources and we wonder why things are hard for us. I can tell you this for a fact, ladies and gentlemen. If we don't remove these clowns from office, our plight will be worse than we ever thought, ladies and gentlemen. See how people can be so poor and hungry in many African countries when the land is literally flowing with milk and honey. Every time we have food shortages here and there in Africa, do you know what Traore is doing about that, ladies and gentlemen? He is drilling over 1,000 meters deep of boreholes in many places across the country to provide access to drinking and irrigation water throughout the year. He started this in February of this year, and so far, he has drilled eight of such deep boreholes. What excuse is your local government giving you at this time for lack of drinking water? I'll tell you this. They don't care to see the people share drinking water with farm animals. They would rather use those images of the poor people to ask for aids and use the money on something else. This is a 1,000 meter deep borehole, ladies and gentlemen. That thing can hold water forever, trust me. By the time this man is done with the dams and boreholes and farms, Burkina Faso will become the breadbasket of West Africa. I said it here first. Burkina Faso is en route to become West Africa's source of food and fish for a country that has no sea. They are going to have a reliable water supply all year round for irrigation. They will have a booming crop and fish industry and consolidate their food security. What will your country's food situation be in the next three years? Have you asked yourself? Will there be improvement or will there be more explanations as to why things are particularly bad for your country. If you're a Nigerian and you truly love Nigeria, Tinubu cannot continue to lead your country after 2027. Museveni is done. He has no fresh ideas for the type of development the people of Uganda are looking for. Paul Bia and the likes cannot be in charge of our nations. It is game over for them. What we need now is a Traore and I'm conveniently going to replace good leadership with the word Traore. We need Traore for the next chapter of Africa. We need Traore in Togo, Traore in Equatorial Guinea, Eritrea, and Mauritania. For without Traore, we'll go nowhere. Watch out for Burkina Faso in the next three years. 
they will feed all of West Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for taking time to watch this episode. And be kind to subscribe to see more. I'll come your way again with another one very soon. Until then, God bless Africa. And it is bye-bye for now.